found the relationship between the local and global surface matrix matrices for a single truss element. Now let's move on to determining the individual components of this 4x4 global surface matrix for a single truss element. So we said that this is the relationship between the local and global surface matrices of a single truss element. This is the global sniffus matrix and this is the local sniffus matrix and T is the transformation matrix that we found earlier so trans transverse of the transformation matrix multiplied by the local coordinate system multiplied by the transformation matrix gives us the global sniffus matrix. So let's define a convention here that C is equal to cos theta and S is equal to sine theta and we will use that to uh, uh, populate our matrices, either transformation matrix or the uh, stiffest matrices. So from before we had this equation or this relationship between the local and global nodal forces and local and global nodal displacements and we had written for example that F1 X1 F1 Y1 is equal to cos sine minus sine cos times F1x and F1y. And the same is true for the second node. So if I write F2x and F2y in the local coordinate system for a single element would be cos sine minus sine cos here is f2x and f2y so if I want to merge in these two vectors together and create a 4 by 1 vector and do the same thing on the right hand side I need to figure out what these components of the matrix would be. So let me change the color of the pen to green. I have the local or the global forces written here. Let me write them on the top as well. F1x, F1y, F2x and F2y. So and here again it's F1x and F1y. So F1x1 is equal to cos times F1x plus sine times F1y. So I put them here and here. But there is no terms for F2x and F2y so I just put zeros there and there. And F1y1 is minus sine times F1x plus cos times F1y. So I put those minus sine and plus cos here and zeros there. And similarly for the second node I can write that f2x1 is equal to cos times f2x plus sine times f2y and leave zeros for the f1x and f1y and minus sine f2x plus cos f2y and put zeros for this. And I could do the same thing for the displacements. The procedure is the same. The only difference is that instead of forces that we did here we use displacements for these vectors. Other than that, everything else, everything else is the same. Now, I have this equation again, and we know that the local stiffest matrix is defined like that from before, and I just expanded the transformation matrix into a 4x4, four four, so I have a 4x4 four four here, a 4x4 four four matrix here, and a 4x4 four four matrix here, multiplication of all of these is going to give me a 4x4 four four stiffest matrix. Now let's take a look at uh, what we got here. We have two nodes per element and in the global coordinate system we have two degrees of freedom per element right or per node. We have d1x and we have d1y. So 2 multiplied by 2 gives me 4 which means I need to have a 4x4 four four stiffness matrix in the global coordinate system and that's what holds this true. 
Now, if I do this multiplication, if I put this transfer, uh, transverse of the transform, tra transformation matrix here, the local coordinate system here and the transformation matrix there, I will end up with this equation. So this is the global Sniffers matrix. And this is its uh, expansion, uh, individual components of the 4 by 4 global Sniffers matrix. And what does that mean? That means that for each element now, I have nodal forces in the global coordinate system. So these are nodal forces. And I have nodal displacements in the global coordinate system. And I can find the relationship between the two vectors using this global stiffest matrix. And again, this is only for a single truss element. So basically, what we did here is that we found the relationship between the nodal forces and the nodal displacements of a truss element in global current system.